What's up guys, this is Jake Miller and this is 103 Questions because I can't help myself. What's up you guys, it's Extra Eric from 103.3 Amp Radio and I am here with Jake Miller. What's up sir? How's it going? Going great, thanks this for having me. pretty epic. Yeah, thanks for having me. Back to Boston, just got yes. here. Yes, so excited. Uh, I love Boston, man. How's the tour been so far? Amazing. Um, my voice is kind of gone, as you could tell, but every night has I been a party. I hope that doesn't impact it tonight. No, I mean, every day I kind of get on vocal rest. I have a bunch of tea, and then by the time it's showtime, I'm ready to go. But the tour has just been so much fun. Every show has been amazing. All right. Well, I don't want to kill your voice anymore, so let's no, jump right into it. <laughs> <laughs> so the game's 103 questions, and what you're going to do is you're going to pick three numbers one by one and answer the corresponding question. Okay. What do you want to go with first? One through three? That's one through 103. One through 103. Just pick any number. Any number. I'm going to go with 76. 76 is a fun one. Okay, let's do it. Can you rap a Nicki Minaj lyric? Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> you got to follow <laughs> BB Rexa so on many. this one, so. Oh, she did it? Yeah. Oh, she's good. She's probably really good. And at she it. threw down. BB Rexa. I mean, uh, Nicki Minaj. Okay. Hold on. Can you help me? Can you help any me? Any songs jump into mine? Anaconda, but I, I don't remember how the rap verse goes. Does anybody um, know the first line? And I could probably do you want do it. for uh, it's um, you know it. Yeah, I know. Don't it. Why am I <laughs> blanking now? Well, I keep going. This dude named Michael used to ride motorcycles, but that's not. I don't think you want to rap that verse. Man, honestly, I'm not very good at <laughs> Nicki Minaj lyrics. I love her, but I, I, super bass. Come on. Boom, ba -dum 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 I don't know any <laughs> lyrics though of her raps because usually she's on like features with like Drake, and he's yeah. my favorite, so I spend all of my attention and memory memorizing his raps. what about only, oh so yeah we do the opposite <laughs> i memories memorize the nikki verse exactly only so together we could probably do it um man, what kidding. drake one's coming to mind uh pretty much any of them <laughs> drake um i think i killed everybody in the game last year man i was on though and i think i found the girl in my dreams at a strip club mm -mm. I was wrong though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. As a song called uh, Over My Dead Drake, Body. I suck. Oh, he's my favorite. Unless there's a Nikki feature. Yeah. All right, let's jump to a second question. We'll okay. take you out of your misery on that one. <laughs> um, let's go with 12. 12, 12 is my lucky number. 12. What's the worst date you've ever been on? The worst date I've ever been on? Um, that's a good question. It wasn't really a date, but in fifth grade, it was probably my first like Throwback. girlfriend. Yeah. And um, it was this girl who I was like crazy about, really my first crush ever. And um, it was oh, Valentine's God. Day. So me and my mom <laughs> went out and got her like an expensive bracelet, like a diamond bracelet. It was probably like 40 bucks. But yeah. in my head, like I had no money back then. I was fifth grader. So I that just, was that Tiffany. Pretty much. Like I thought <laughs> I, li I just put like my life savings into this bracelet and I was like so happy to give it to her. And I gave it to her on uh, Valentine's Day, and like an hour later, she lost it. And so I broke <laughs> up with her on Valentine's Day. Are you Day. serious? Yeah, I was so mad. It was like, like that was like, like me and my mom put a lot of effort into that. She drove me to the store. I picked it out myself. I didn't know what I was doing. I sure she didn't just pawn <clears throat> it, the lost it. Yeah, maybe she like re-gifted it or something. <laughs> to, I, don't, I don't really know what happened, but I broke up with her because I was so upset. That's so savage. That was a bad date. I'll always say I, I broke up with my first girlfriend on Valentine's Day. How long were you dating at that point? Like a day? Oh, maybe not even, <laughs> you know, in fifth grade, you don't really know what's considered dating and, no. and what's just like kind of crushing. But I mean, I liked this girl for like years and then she like finally was like my for girlfriend years in elementary school. No, it's true. Yeah. She was in all my classes and <laughs> she was like the cutest one. So I'm surprised yeah. that hasn't popped into a song yet. I know. So I still, t I still give a shit about it. Are you still lie. talk to her? I saw her like three nights ago at the New York show. Damn. Yeah. She's awesome though. Are you from New York? No, I'm from Florida. Florida. Yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Let's I live in LA now. Third question. Yes. Um, Scott, give me a number. Come on. Scott. 11. 11. What's an exclusive detail about a project that you're working on? Oh, that's not bad. So first of all, I'm not signed to any label right now, so I'm happy to answer these <laughs> questions. I have no You've limitations. You've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. No, I mean, this is the first time um, ever that I'm doing radio runs or putting out an album or going on tour without a label behind me. You just dropped 2 a.m. in L.A. I just dropped a new album. Know. It's called 2 a.m. in L.A. I did the entire thing in my bedroom. I learned how to produce my own beats. I yeah, wrote that's every crazy. lyric. I recorded it in my bedroom. I mixed it. I mastered it. I uploaded it to iTunes all by myself in my little bedroom in L.A. So tell me at what point in the creative process were you like, do you definitive, definitively were like, I'm going to actually <clears throat> teach myself how to do this. I'm not going to look out other help. I'm just going to do it all on my own. Well, the mixture of like not really having as many resources that a label would provide 
which kind of like fueled me to do it myself. Yeah. And also just having a kind of crazy year emotionally with things beside the, my career, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of ups and downs with relationship stuff and just personal stuff. Um, I just got out of a relationship for the first time in eight years. So I just had which a lot of pretty crazy. Yeah, it, it was for a while. I was just like very emotional and vulnerable and I just had a lot of things to say. And so I didn't want anybody making the beats for me and I didn't want anybody helping me write the lyrics because they don't know what's in my head. And I felt like this was like the first time ever in my songwriting career where like the songs could write themselves just because I'm feeling so like emotional. Mm -hmm. And so all these songs on this album, I just felt like they had to come straight from me and my heart. And so before this year, I had never even made a beat in my life. So I went to- Was it easy to start? No, definitely not. Sounds like an awful process. No, I mean, it was fun to learn. It's <laughs> definitely fun to learn. But um, the only thing I really knew how to do growing up was play guitar. And if you know how to play guitar, you can't really make beats. If you know how to play piano, you're golden. Like, you need to know how to play piano and know chords to make beats. So the first thing I went, I went to Guitar Center. I got a piano. I spent eight hours a day on the piano every day. And then Damn. I downloaded Logic. I figured out how to make beats and figured out how to mix it and master it and make it sound just as good as any other song on iTunes and Spotify. And that's it. Yeah, you'd never know. You never know. And, it, and now I know how to do it for the rest of my life, and I don't need anybody else. So were you already working on new music after you dropped this? Because so you're coming to the end say. of your sold-out tour. Right. So I'm basically going home right after this tour, and I'm going to be you know, getting back in the studio, maybe make a little five-song EP or something. Um, I have no your idea favorite. what kind of yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of you know sound it's gonna be. If I want, I can make a country album. I have literally no limits. Something right Something tells me you're not gonna make a country album. Probably though. not. Maybe like opera or something. But opera? Who knows? What that voice do? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I don't really know. Maybe like a mixture of what I just did and like some like a cool like live acoustic John Mayer type feel because he's my favorite. So I really don't know. I'm just gonna get back in the studio and keep recording. Have you done anything for it yet, or do you have like anything? I've recorded a few songs brain. that didn't make the 2 a.m. in LA album, but that probably just means that they'll never see the light yeah. of day. Um, because if they weren't good back then, then they Why definitely would you won't use them for be. Something new? Yeah, exactly. Especially because you have to follow 2 a.m. in LA exactly. with something good, and you always have to you know keep coming with better songs, not just settling and bringing songs back from the past. But my plan for the rest of you know the next few years is just make music, put it out, tour off of it. Make music, put it out, tour off of it, on repeat. Hopefully the shows get bigger, the album sales get better. That's all I can ask yeah. for. Touring is my favorite thing in the world. How's it been so far? This tour's been pretty, it looks like it's pretty lit. Amazing. I mean, I'm on a tour bus with 13 of my best friends. How can you not have an amazing time? And on top of that, I do what I love every night. I'm playing yeah. shows and I'm meeting fans and it's just, I'm in a different city every night. I woke up in Boston this morning. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, it's so much fun. I What's can't the complain. craziest thing that's happened on tour <clears throat> so far? On this tour, there's been a there's few always crazy some after stuff parties. Um, the craziest that you thing. can tell us. <laughs> I mean, now more than ever, it's happened in the past a lot, but now more than ever, I'm seeing almost like ten people every day in the meet and greets who have my lyrics tattooed on them. Most of them are handwritten lyrics because what people do is they're co- they'll come up to me in my shows, they'll say, "Can you rewrite this lyric of yours?" I'll write it in my handwriting, and then they'll go and get it tattooed. I have a lot of friends that do that for Nick Jonas. Really? Believe it or not. <laughs> I have a whole photo album on my phone of all these pictures that I've collected be- just because I think it's so crazy. What are some of the lines? Is there like one main a, one that everyone always uses? Yeah, there's a song called I'm Alright. It was one of the first songs I ever made, ironically. But um, the lyric is, we feel, sun- <laughs> we, feel sun- we feel sorrow, we feel pain, but there's sunshine after rain. And like I, I either see that tattooed on people every day or write it for somebody yeah. who's going to get it tattooed. The other day I met this kid named Omar who just had Jake Miller on his arm. <laughs> Just Jake Miller. Just Jake Miller. <laughs> tattooed on his arm. Basic font or anything fun? No, it was cursive with like a little rose underneath, but I was like, wow, it's so crazy. Like, I have a, I have a John Mayer tattoo. And like, I was going to say, the way I, I spotted I look at him, that one. Yeah. Stop the favorite song. The way I look at him, like, to think that people might look at me the same way I look at John Mayer, that's mind-blowing to me. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Was well, there anything you want to say before we end this? Go get my album, 2AM in LA. Um, you probably can't see me on tour because my show is tonight, but that's okay. I'll be back <laughs> in Boston and, um, yeah, there'll be a lot more tours, a lot more music. And thank you for sticking with me and supporting me. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me.